It's time to look at the waiver wire for week two, and we're going to be looking at 10 running backs today that you could potentially get off waivers or maybe even trade for in your fantasy league. We're looking at the trends. We're looking at the advanced metrics. We're looking at what they have done in week one to see if you need to go after these players. You need to hit that subscribe button, though, and stop missing out on this information because we're dropping content on the daily. We're covering multiple players a day. We're doing deep dives. We're helping you with lineups, the waiver wire, and everything else to help you win that championship this year. But let's dig in. Let's look at these 10 players to see if you're interested in any of them off the waiver wire or trade, or maybe you already have them. But let's take a look. First off, Kyron Williams. And this isn't in any particular order, but... He is running a lot of routes. He's one of the tops in the league among running backs and route participation rate. Scored two touchdowns, getting some opportunity, out snapped Cam Akers, and things are looking good. I like that he's running a lot of routes for PPR and in blow up game scripts where they're passing the ball a lot. That means he's going to be getting some opportunity in the pass game. I like that more than. The point total of 17 PPR fantasy points, really, because I like it when running backs are getting opportunity in the passing game, because one, that ups their floor, and then also ups their ceiling as well, because if they catch a couple checkdowns and on top of the rushing production, could be a decent performance. I'm not in love with the run game here. I'm not in love with Kyron Williams as a player long term, but I do love the opportunity here, and I think this could be a get for some people in fantasy, especially if you're hurting at the running back position already. He had a good game script this week that allowed for him to get some opportunities, especially for those touchdowns. But be on the lookout for him. Be on the lookout for him in those game scripts that are supposed to be high scoring. I look for the Rams to throw the ball a lot this year because now that Puka Naku is hitting, you're going to get Cooper Cup potentially back this year. So you're going to get some opportunities in the passing game. Why not push the ball downfield? And if it's not downfield, you got a running back here that you're using a lot in the passing game. You can use as a check down option. He ran 28 routes and did not pass block much on the passing plays. Mostly running routes, meaning he's getting some opportunity in the passing game, which is something good you want to see out of your running backs. Let's look at another running back here, Joshua Kelly. Might be getting some opportunity here soon. Looked good last week. And honestly, he has been a huge handcuff over the last year or so for Austin Eckler. And Austin Eckler right now is dealing with an ankle injury. We don't know how long he's going to be out, if at all. But with that being said, even with Eckler being healthy on the field, Kelly is one of the top handcuffs still in the league because this offense generates fantasy points. They move the chains. They're explosive. He can be used in the passing game. He's also very efficient with the ball in his hands. And we saw it last week. 5.7 yards per carry, 91 rushing yards and a touchdown. Had some long gains in preseason. He's a running back that you need to be paying attention to. We were paying attention to him last year as a handcuff running back. Because if he got the opportunity, if something happened to Eckler, could be a big deal. He could be a big deal here soon if something happens to Austin Eckler. Next, we're going to be looking at the running backs here. For the Baltimore Ravens and Justice Hill is another waiver wire dandy. He scored two touchdowns last week. J.K. Dobbins is done for the year due to an Achilles injury. And what we like about Justice Hill is the size of just athleticism. He's got a lot of pop in his step. He's very explosive. He's been on the team for a while now, so he's an incumbent there. Could be getting some opportunity, but I would not be surprised. Even though Harbaugh said they were not looking externally, that they don't bring in another running back. We got Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette floating around. We could see one of them on this team. They did bring in a slew of other running backs last year. Just as Hill, though, he's explosive with the ball in his hands. Can be used in the passing game. He was very productive at Oklahoma State back in the day. He's a guy that needs to be on your radar because this team likes to run the ball they're efficient in the run game and this team can really help the running backs in scoring for fantasy football and then there's also Gus Edwards we're not forgetting about him he is the true incumbent running back in 2020 he excelled we got the points per game down there and that back half of the season in 2020 it looked really good then tore his ACL the following year just been coming back from injuries really 
But this is an opportunity for him to showcase what he can do. He can be a pounder between the tackles. He's very efficient. He's good in getting yards after contact. With Dobbins being out for the year, you could see him get some opportunity as well. Had eight carries for 32 yards last week against the Texans in an optimal game script. Again, this is another running back that you just want to throw at the wall and see if he sticks. He has been proven to be productive in the past. Injuries have impacted his production, his opportunities in recent years. But now we get to see what he can do with a fuller workload, with more opportunities. Watch what they do with these running backs. Take a stab at one of them. Edwards could be the guy. Hill could be the guy. But more than likely, we're going to be getting a committee and possibly another veteran thrown into the mix here. Next, we are looking at Kenneth Gainwell. Had a big day yesterday, 54 yards, and then also caught four passes for 20 yards as well. And he had a huge share of the snaps there. He ran 41 snaps, had a 62% snap share, and had a lot more snaps than DeAndre Swift and the other running backs on the team. And that is a good indicator that they're looking to use him or they don't care who's that running back and they're just going to throw out the hot hand. But Kenneth Gainwell is a get off the waiver wire, a look at the waiver wire, whatever you want to do, how deep your league is. But there's some upside here. He can be used in the passing game. He was very productive coming out of college. He's a running back who has the potential to be a key piece of this offense. And we like seeing these running backs get opportunity. I am just going to wait and see what happens with this team. They could throw DeAndre Swift some touches here and there, give him more opportunity in the passing game as he transitions to this offense. But right now, Kenneth Gainwell is the guy. And if you're hurting a running back and you don't get the other running backs and he's still there in the waiver wire, go ahead and get him. Go ahead and try and see what happens with him. He's a guy to stash. He's a guy to see what happens with. He was going late in drafts on underdog fantasy. And for a reason there, because this offense at the running back position is a little bit murky, but we're starting to get the waters a little bit cleared up as we see the touches go to Gainwell here in week one. Let's see what happens with him. Next, we're looking at Tajay Spears, and this was an interesting game here. As we saw, Tajay Spears get 34 snaps, Derrick Henry get 30, and Spears playing his first ever NFL game, drafted in the third round, looked good at Tulane, is a very explosive player who could be used in the passing game. If something happens to Henry, they're definitely going to run Spears into the ground. They're definitely going to give him those opportunities, probably one of the top handcuffs in the league. Because they are not going against the run game. No matter what the game script is, they're going to be using the running backs. They're going to be giving them opportunity. Had a good snap share in this game. And that is an indicator that he could be getting more opportunities throughout the year. Remember, this is his first ever NFL game. And it's not like he was a first or even second round pick. He does have some juice in his legs. Looked good at Tulane. Go back and look at that Tulane USC game last year and let me know what you think about him. He looks good between the tackles as well. Looked good at the Senior Bowl. And you know what? Tajay Spears has been on the up for quite a long time. So I would not be surprised if he does something as a rookie. Next, we are looking at Tyler Algier. A lot of people forgot about him. He might be on waivers in your league. Or on the back end of someone's roster, he might be even a sell high right now if you're looking at it that way. But Bijan Robson 10 carries, Tyler Algier 15 carries. Snap wise, Bijan Robson 33 snaps, Tyler Algier 29 snaps. They want to use both running backs, and the reason why is first off. They want to run the football a lot, and you do not want to overstimulate or overuse Bijan Robinson. You spent a first-round pick on him. You want to use him in the passing game, too, because he's a hell of a receiver out of the backfield. One of the best pass-catching backs in all of football right now. And then Tyler Algier, you can pound him between the tackles, give him goal-line looks, use him to be that hammer, take some of that wear and tear off Robinson, really have that insurance policy for your diamond running back here and use Tyler Algier to pound it. He's a thousand yard rusher. He does have some goods in the run game. Was productive at BYU. Has some good size to him. This is a good one two offense. And you know what? Using two running backs is a normal thing in the NFL right now. That is a normal thing. And they use a lot of volume at the running back position. And if something happens to Bijan, 
Algier's going to see a huge amount of workload. He's going to see it again like he did last year. So he's a player to be on your radar. He's a guy who should be on the back end of a roster if you're in a deeper league, 12-man league, or should already be on a roster. He's a guy who shouldn't be on waivers, really, because of opportunity. And you need to watch him and see what happens because he's proven to be productive before. Next, we were looking at Deion Jackson. The scoring for fantasy was putrid. It did not look good. But... 51 in snaps played, 8th most among running backs, getting opportunity. Evan Halls hurts. We don't know how long he's going to be out, if at all, but he's got a knee injury. That's less competition for him. So you're going to see Deion Jackson get some more opportunity going forward. And he's highly athletic, has juice in his legs, and has proven to be productive off and on when given the opportunity. So he can give spike weeks when the game script goes well. But we have to pay attention to his usage. He's more like a flyer. You don't want to start him. You don't want to ever start this guy. But if you have to, you have to. And there's upside here because he's dangerous with the ball in his hands. If they give him some green in front of him, he's good to get a long gain. Could be getting some touchdowns around the goal line. So he's a guy to pay attention to. Really should be on a roster some there. Shouldn't be sitting on waivers because he's seeing 51 snaps. That's a lot of opportunity for a running back. And really, when we're looking at running backs on the back end, we want touches, we want targets, we want snaps. And then after that, we're just hoping for the best. Same thing here with Deion Jackson. Next, we're looking at Rashawn Johnson. Should be on a roster. He should be on a roster. And if you've been watching this channel all offseason, he's on a roster on your team. Guaranteed, because we talked about him a lot. Had a good game. This was his first NFL game as well. One touchdown. Five carries, 20 yards, six catches on seven targets, 34.7 route participation rate, one of the highest among running backs in the NFL. Snap share wise, 29 snaps for him, 27 for Herbert, 21 for Foreman. Seems like it's kind of a mess here. They also used Johnson a little bit more on the tail end of the game, and Herbert started out the first series. But the thing about this, a mess like this, where the rookie running back is being used as much as the veterans i don't care when it is in the game that's a good sign that's a good sign because we're in the first game of the season we have 17 to go that means there's a good chance that he might be getting opportunity somewhere down the line because he's already being used he's being used in the passing game he's being used between the tackles he's a bigger running back with some juice Keep an eye on Rashawn Johnson. He needs to be on a roster. He's a stash. He's a big-time stash. Also, Tank Bigsby is a stash. Didn't have the greatest game, but but he's getting goal line work. He's getting goal line opportunities, and that's all we need from him, really, because his offense can move the chains, give him opportunity around the goal line situations, and he is a guy that you just hope falls into the end zone. And then you get those fancy points and you roll on to the next week. And if something happens to ETN because ETN's the dude in this offense, then Bigsby's going to be the dude in this offense because he's going to be seen work in the passing game. He ran four routes, which is a lot considering ETN was running a lot of routes and was on the field a lot of the time. And he's going to be seeing goal line situations, goal line work, getting opportunity, and they can use him to run between the tackles. Look for his role to expand little by little as well. Because after all, he's still just a rookie. Still learning the game. Give him some time. Be patient. But again, he's a back of the roster stash. Could be on waivers in your league as he was a late round pick. But if you've been watching this channel, he should have been drafted. But that's it. Those are 10 players that you can get off waivers. 10 running backs that could help your team. 10 running backs that you need to pay attention to. You might want to pick them up now. You may want to watch them. You may already have them. But they are trending upwards. They are looking good per the numbers. They are getting some opportunity. They are getting some workload. They are getting some chances to do some things to help you out in fantasy football. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Catch you on the next video.